I'm going to walk you through three different ways that you can help your child get rid of the pacifier so that neither one of you have any meltdowns in the process. All right, okay, here we go. The first step is to limit the pacifier to bedtime by six months of age, 12 months of age at the very, very latest. I like parents to start at around six months of age if the child doesn't need it for some medical reason like sensory processing difficulties, et cetera. Okay, so whether you co-sleep or your baby is in his own crib, Teach your child that when before you pick them up, that we're going to gently take the pacifier out of the mouth and put it back on the crib mattress. You want them to know this before you lift them out of bed. You know, so often we think about the bedtime routine and putting the kids to bed, but the transition from the bed to your arms when they wake up is just as important too. So you can include that in this transitional time. Make sure from six months of age, the baby knows to take the pacifier out and put the pacifier on the mattress. Or if you want, what I like to do, especially for my little bit older kids up to about age one when we really need to get rid of it. Um, is I create a little pacifier garage or a pacifier box and we decorate it with the kids favorite Disney character or we bedazzle it or whatever they want and then when we open it up the kids put the pacifier in there and we shut it and it's just right there by the crib and then mommy or daddy lifts them out okay wanted you to know that the American Dental Association recommends saying goodbye to the pacifier by two years of age but Personally, I want it gone by 18 months of age. Now remember, we were just talking about limiting it to the crib between six and 12 months of age. But to get rid of it permanently, you've got to start by limiting it to the crib and not having it throughout the day. Speech pathologists cringe when they see kids with pacifiers in their mouth all day long because if they got a passy in their mouth, they're not talking. And we need them to practice talking. Plus, having a pacifier can influence changes in your palate and in the facial muscles. As a matter of fact, oral facial myologists who specialize in facial muscle balance, essentially, and palate formation, often want these children to be done with the pacifier day or night by 12 months of age, but I say 18 months. Now, again, the American Dental Association says two years of age. Uh, I don't really agree with that because it's so much easier to take a pacifier away from an 18 month old than a two year old. So don't put yourself through the misery. Don't wait, do it by 18 months. I'm gonna tell you how, I'm gonna give you three different ways. First of all, if your child has one of those cute pacifiers made by Wubbinub, you know, you've seen them, they've got the little um, cute little animals attached to the Suvi pacifier, which is a fabulous pacifier, by the way, <coughs> excuse me. Well, what you want to do is think about how you're pairing that animal, that lovey, with the pacifier. That's the beauty of a wubbinub. Gather all of your wubbinubs in the house, and I want you to cut off the pacifiers from the stuffed animal and gather all the pacifiers up except for one. Leave one attached. Now, give your child about a week to really get used to the fact that they can love on their lovey without having the pacifier attached. Now what you're gonna do is snip up the, snip off that last pacifier. And I recommend seriously doing this on garbage pickup day, because if you throw it right in the garbage can and it gets hauled away, you're not gonna be tempted to dish it out later. You have to parent bravely when you're doing this. All right, now, your child has a lovey, right, to soothe himself while sleeping. And ideally, you want to keep that lovey, that little animal, in the crib so that your child doesn't become dependent on needing it away from bedtime. That's another key point with this method. Um, if you watched my YouTube video that we did last week on how to stop thumb sucking, you may remember that I talked a lot about combining some sort of chewy, like a chewable necklace like this, for a child to transition during this period. But you don't wanna put a necklace in the crib. You wanna use something more like, um, oh gosh, even this pea right here, you know, any sort of chewy that they could hold on to and maybe chew on a little bit in the crib if they needed to during this transitional time. So be sure to watch that video uh, so that you can learn more about that. 
the kids really need that oral input during a transitional period. The second method, it's a little bit expensive, but super fun in case you're into this. If you're into Build-A-Bear, just go to a Build-A-Bear workshop and you know, they're in most shopping malls across the country. Kids of all ages, <laughs> including me, love Build-A-Bear and they create their own stuffed animals from start to finish. If you, I, I can't think of anyone who's never been to a Build-A-Bear, but they create their stuffed animals from start to finish and then there's an employee there who helps the kids stuff and then they sew up the animal so that it has just that right amount of hug for that kid. Well, what you're gonna do is explain to your child that it's time to get a special friend to help them fall asleep. So when it comes time to stuff the bear at Build-A-Bear, the attendant at the workshop will place the pacifier, usually it's in the bear's ear, but you can put it anywhere in the bear, in the bear, and fill the bear with stuffing, and then they sew the bear shut. Now your child can still feel the pacifier inside the bear's ear. They're reassured that it's still there, but they also have an extra soft friend to cuddle. And um, parents, you are not allowed to cut open that bear, okay? <laughs> Again, parent bravely. All right, the last method is the one I used with my kids. It's the, it's broken, I can't fix it method. And it's really inexpensive to do, very easy to implement. It just takes a little bit more time. So here's what you're gonna do. I usually will do this for a child at about 18 months of age. I have to admit, for the younger set, it's a little hard to do this method. So begin by having just a few simple broken items like a crayon or a pencil, um, uh, whatever it happens to be that you don't mind kind of snapping in half and just leaving them about on the kitchen counter or on the carpet, whatever. So that with your child, you can come across that broken pencil and you can say, oh no, it's broken. Try to put it together and say, mm, it's broken, I can't fix it. Do this kind of thing for about a week. Let your child take the pencil and take it to the trash can and throw it away so they understand that if something's broken, truly broken, we can't fix it. And it usually goes in the trash. All right. After a week of introducing this concept, take the pacifier that's in the crib and just snip off the tip when your child's not there. Now, listen, by the tip, though, I don't mean like the very edge of the pacifier. I'm talking about uh, the main part of the pacifier that goes in the kid's mouth. And every pacifier shape is different. You don't want to do the method that I so often see on the internet where you're supposed to snip off a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more because that's very chokeable for children. Once you break open a pacifier like that, the little pieces of silicone can actually come off very easily in their mouth and they could inhale that into their lungs. So please don't use that method. Just snip off the entire um, portion that goes into their mouth. And then what you wanna do is, um, is put it in the child's crib. And you're gonna be aware of when this happens. So when the child goes into their crib, then they're going to pick it up and they're going to say, it's broken. It's, it's very sweet. <laughs> the video camera ready. It made me tear up when I did it with my kids. But they're going to be okay. All right. They're going to be okay. So that broken pacifier is now in their crib. And you're just going to give them a big hug and say, yeah, it's broken. I can't fix it. Make sure they have another lovey or something to chew on. And then you know, honestly, I remember I just went in the other room and poured myself a glass of wine. It's okay. It's fine if you need to do that. This is really a big emotional moment for parents. So you and your kiddo are going to be fine without the pacifier. Give yourself three days to get through it. That's usually all it takes and the kids have then forgotten about it. Make sure they have a transitional object and something to chew on and then celebrate how brave you both were.